Hey, Jared Borkowski here from soundguitarlessons.com. In this video, we are going to work on writing a complete song in a minor key. We're especially going to work on getting the song form and chord progressions for a complete song structure in a minor key with a bunch of exercises that help us have clarity on what our, all of our options are. I have four steps we're gonna go through and each step has multiple things that we're gonna do inside of it, um, including mapping out all of the chord options that are available to us and that's going to include some chords that are outside of the key as well. So this is gonna be really cool and really interesting. And there are a couple things we can do to make it sound especially minor and to treat it functionally like a minor key. And let's go into step one. So step one is just mapping out our chord options. And the first thing of course for yourself is to choose a minor key. Let's do it in G minor for this video. If you choose a key that has more open string friendly uh, chord options, feel free to map out your chord options any way you want to. I'm not gonna tell you how, you know, what voicings to use, but I will guide you very clearly on, um, at least inspire you on how to get all of your options figured out. So because we're in G minor, we're going to use mostly um, movable chord shapes that don't have open strings involved. And uh, if you do want to study more of this, I have a free chord chart called Chords with Color that has chords through five different keys. It has a bunch of the open string chords, other chord options, and it shows how to think of the chords in minor keys. So that could be helpful for you if you need a resource uh, to work through. Uh, some chord options that are inside a key. So step one, mapping out our chord options. Uh, this is exercise one. In this step, there's gonna be a bunch of exercises because I want us to see the chords in multiple ways. So exercise one, one is what we'll call it since we're in step one, exercise one. Um, this is that we want to map out the triads along the sixth string from the tonic chord, which is the main chord, the, the one chord of the key. Any voicings you want. Um, we're gonna do it along the sixth string. You start on the tonic chord and you're gonna go as high as you can on your guitar and then below it and then back up. So I'll use these voicings uh, that are just simple for now. You can do full chord voicings if you want to. I'm going to um, use one, five, three, this voicing. I, I really love just to hear a nice simple uh, clear chord with just the three notes in it for triads. We're gonna do seventh chords and all that stuff next. So the one chord is minor. A whole step up from that is a diminished chord. A lot of people don't use this chord in songwriting, but it's there. It's in the key, it's in the scale. So we want to map it out and see it and hear it. One chord, two chord is the diminished triad. The three chord is a half step above two. One, two, flat three of the scale. The chord here is major, okay? The next chord is a whole step up and it's minor. This is the four chord. The next chord is five chord. In a minor key, this is minor. But to function as a minor key, this is turned major. This is what creates the harmonic minor scale. Check out my video on the harmonic minor scale that explains the theory of that more in more detail. And a video that I have also on chords through the minor key, which goes through more of the theory instead of just a songwriting thing. So the five chord, Every time we map out all our chords, we're gonna play it as minor, and we're gonna also play it as major, okay? Then we go up a half step to the six chord. Now, sometimes you'll hear me say flat six chord because in the scale, one, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, the root note of the chord, in this case of the sixth chord, is flat six of the scale. So flat six major is how you, you will hear this um, You'll hear this titled flat six major or just the sixth chord of a minor key. The seventh chord of a minor key is flat seven major. The root is the flat seven away from, you know, in the scale, and then it is a major chord, and then go up to the tonic. If your guitar doesn't reach that high, maybe you're playing on a acoustic or classical guitar, don't worry about it, go as high as you can and then back down. So we'll go back down to flat seven major, flat six major, five major, five minor, do those in either order. We're just making sure we show our options there. Four is always minor. Three is flat three major. So the root is the flat three of the scale and it's a major chord. Two is diminished and then one is of course minor and then go below. This is flat seven major again, down below the tonic and back up. So we do that on the sixth string and then we want to do all the triads on the fifth string. And now G is up here. And I'll use these voicings again, where I'm playing one, five, three of every chord. Um, and I will 
be plucking them, but of course you can strum them as, strum them as well as long as you uh, mute strings appropriately. So now I'm going to start on the tonic, go as high as I can, go all the way back down, and then back up. This is very much like my root-to-root -root approach to playing scales, starting on the main sound, going above it, going below it, landing back on that main sound, so we hear it um, as having a tonal center. So here is G minor, that is the one chord. A whole step up is that diminished chord, okay? Half step up is flat three major. We'll go up one more on this guitar since I can reach it easily. Uh, a whole step up from that is the four minor. Okay, back down, flat three major, two diminished, one minor, flat seven major, flat six major, five as major, five as minor, four as minor, flat three as major, two as diminished, that's using it as an open string chord there. Okay, back up to flat three major, okay, up to four minor, up to five as minor, five as major, flat six as major, flat seven as major, and back to one. Let me do that once so you hear how I like it to sound without me talking. Hear how it's really nice to start and end on the tonic there. So that's exercise two. This is step one, exercise two, to map out your um, triads along the fifth string. Okay, let's do now tonic to tonic. Tonic is the main chord of the key. Same thing, tonic to tonic, we can call it, since with scales, I like to say root to root, start on the root, end on the root, that kind of thing. Tonic to tonic with seventh chords along the sixth string. So now the voicing I'm gonna use is one, five, seven, three, for every chord, so the bottom, four strings, one, five, seven, three of every chord. So the one chord is minor seven, the two chord is half diminished, the three chord is major seven, the four chord is minor seven, the five chord is minor seven, but then we turn it into the major version, which is dominant seven. The side note here is that that sound leads to the tonic minor again, and that's what gives it the true functional minor key sound. That's very kind of more classical traditional sounding. If you don't use that, but play in a minor key, you're kind of technically playing in a minor mode. One of my side tangents, let's move on from five as dominant seven and six. This is flat six as major seven. This is flat seven as dominant seven. Dominant seven naturally exists as the flat, the chord off the flat seven of a minor scale, okay? and back to one as minor seven. Again, check out my video on minor uh, chords through the minor keys if you want more of the theory on this instead of just this quick review map out for the sake of songwriting. Back down, dominant seven is, or the flat seven chord is dominant seven, flat six chord of the scale is major seven, five is dominant seven, five is minor seven, four as minor seven, three, flat three as major seven, uh, two as half diminished, the tonic chord, the one chord as minor seven, flat seven as dominant seven, back to this. Okay, so map all those out. We're gonna play with them more. Uh, final step of this phase is gonna be making sure we see them so clearly that we can kind of improvise with them and write with them. Let's go to the fifth string root though and do the same thing. G minor seven off the fifth string root. Okay, half diminished, that's A half diminished. B flat major seven is the flat three chord. C minor seven is the four chord. Back to the flat three chord, the two chord, the one chord. The flat seven chord of the key is dominant seven, that's F dominant seven. E flat major seven is the flat six chord of the key. D seven, D minor seven, C minor seven, and then B flat major seven is the third chord of G minor, and then A half diminished, back up. There's the three chord, four chord, five chord is minor seven, five chord is dominant seven, flat six major seven chord, flat seven chord, and back to G minor seven. So now we mapped it out in four ways so far, our chord options. Um, let's continue on with 
a couple more options. This is where it gets spicy and cool. We are going to play through the circle of fourths with triads, and we're gonna start on the highest position that we can play um, up on the neck. And then we're gonna play through the circle of fourths uh, where we're gonna be going up a fourth or down a fifth. And we are going to do that just to see the crossing strings options uh, of the of the chords. Because right now we're going up and down sixth string, up and down fifth string. So what if I start here on C minor seven, the four chord, and then if you're on the fifth string, you wanna go down a fifth. So I'm gonna go down to F dominant seven or down to the flat seven chord of the key. Now, if you've done that other stuff and you haven't done this, then this is a great place to be right now. Okay, four chord to flat seven chord. Oop, let's do it as triads. C minor to F major. Now we're gonna go up a fourth, okay? So then we're gonna go B flat major, which is the flat three major chord of the key. So four minor chord, flat seven major, flat three major. Um, and then we go to the flat six major. Then the two half diminished. Oh, we're hearing kind of a familiar chord progression maybe. As major, as minor, and then to the one chord. Now let's just listen to that again for a second. <laughs> That's interesting. That is the progression of Autumn Leaves and a million other songs, um, because a lot of the functional harmony, especially in jazz chord progressions, is following the circle of fourths functionally. The circle of fourths, when you go from this distance that is up a fourth or down a fifth, you're using what's called a 5-1 relationship or a dominant to tonic relationship. And this is uh, what creates this sense of arrival. There's kind of a gravity that moves this distance, regardless of the uh, chord quality. So you heard that kind of function there. There's a lot of songs, not just jazz tunes, that have that kind of um, motion to it. So it's quite satisfying and musical to map your chords out this way. We ended up on G minor. Okay, now we're gonna go to the four chord on the other strings, switch strings, flat seven chords, switch strings, three chord, uh, switch strings, flat six chords, switch strings, two chord, etc. cetera, five, five, one, four. Okay, pretty cool, right? So you don't need to go back up on that one. Just start all the way high and then go down as far as you can go. Let's do it with um, seventh chords. C minor seven, F dominant seven, B flat major seven, E flat major seven, A half diminished, D seven or D minor seven, G minor seven, C minor seven, F seven, uh, B flat major seven, E flat major seven, A half diminished again, D seven, D minor seven. Okay, so every time I go to write a song, write a progression, it's not like I do this, but I kind of do. I Well, if I don't feel like I can see it this clearly and know all my options that well, then I certainly do. That's the point of practicing. That's the whole reason. Okay, I, I want to have this down so I can use it in real music somehow or another, whether it's whether this is gonna help you learn songs faster and remember them longer or write songs and write chord progressions, whatever your goals are that you are you know, wanting to do in music, um, that amount of clarity in a key with the harmony uh, is that that's what makes this feel like it's this smooth and expressive process and not just guessing and checking and not just haphazard I'm hoping something sounds good. You can get to good results a hundred times faster when you know it that well, rather than just, you know, fishing and hunting for something. And then when it sounds good, you try to keep it, or you might forget what it was later because you don't know how the how it functions on the guitar. So that's all to say that if I don't feel this level of clarity when I'm writing in a certain key or improvising in a certain key or learning a song in a certain key, then I go through stuff like that. To be like, oh yeah, this is here, this is here, this is here, this is here. Awesome, awesome, awesome. You know, if I'm learning a song, I say, ah, oh, that's why they went to this chord, because it makes sense, you know, in this way. So I can't recommend this kind of practicing enough. I think it's it's um, essential. You can hear and feel how when you even go through those options, you're it already feels like you're kind of writing something. Like, oh shoot, that could be just a progression, that little moment there, where I love the way those two chords sounded together. I'm going to use that. 
So we did the circle of fourths with the triads. We did it with the seventh chords. And then the last step, this is the seventh step of, rather, this is the seventh exercise of step one. So I'm calling this exercise one seven is just improvise with them to, to feel good about it. This is tricky because now you have to feel your way around, you know, you have to make sure it feels good to you. Don't just play random chords, play something that feels good. So a lot of times that is, you know, I might, I might go to strumming here. So when I'm thinking of it as real music, suddenly I'm not just trying to review a bunch of options. I'm repeating stuff because I, that's what sounds good in music. Oh, that sounded good. I'm going to go back and play it again, right? So just make sure you feel good about uh, doing it in time and finding things that sound good on the fly because you know your options so well. There's minor four chord and then there's that flat three chord. You might go to six, major seven, five dominant seven. Just play with what you know works. You know, whatever, I'm, and I'm just doing that particular strumming right now, but um, I really would sink into it and try all kinds of things. doing some different picking and, and uh, ornamentation around it, but that is just stuff to play with for fluency. You're playing real music at that point. What happens next when we're writing a song is we are just making decisions that we like so much that we want to repeat it over and over again or, you know, put it, to, put it down with ink, so to speak. Let's move on to step two in our entire process. Let's map out the whole song structure. Okay, so... I'm going to just do a very basic song structure and I'll just list it for you here. It's nothing innovative and that's great, but we're just going to get kind of the formula figured out so we can kind of paint by numbers and just fill it in after instead of just saying, well, I got this great progression. What should happen next? Well, let's say when the verse comes, when the chorus comes, all of that, and then piece it together. So the song structure that I would like to do for this song is some kind of intro, whatever that is, I don't know yet. And we'll decide that later. We're gonna have a verse and then a pre-chorus and then a chorus. Pre-chorus is not required, but um, I like throwing them in. So verse, pre-chorus, chorus, repeat that. V second verse, pre-chorus again, chorus again, then a bridge, which is something completely different, and then back to the chorus and then something that just ends it. I'll say that again, we'll make sure it's on the screen. We got intro, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, verse, pre-chorus, chorus, bridge, chorus, ending. Okay. That's just a very typical song structure. You could write a hundred songs with that same structure and it, it won't mean that they're not all going to sound the same because it depends on the feel and the key and every, I mean, so many songs have structures like that and we're not hearing them in this way where we say, oh yeah, that's what, that just sounds like every other song. Um, so it's perfectly fine to just create this, fill it in. Then our creativity can be unleashed a little better when we just have this format, because now we know we're trying to fill something in. So let's move on to step three. This is where we're going to get nitty gritty again and just fill in all of those parts. Okay. So I'm not going to write the intro first. This is something I recommend because I like the intro to be something that, um, has kind of a song signature. Like it has a piece of what we used later in the song. So I like to jump in with writing either the, the chorus right away or the verse right away. Let's jump in with writing the verse right away. Um, so let's just start it on G minor. And I was doing this when I jammed. Now let's go up to, so this is one chord and then flat seven major chord. So G minor, F major, and then bum, bum. That is that uh, five one relationship that I talked about. Sounds very functional. Um, and then let's go to D7. What does that sound like it wants to do? It sounds like it wants to go back to G, G minor, the root chord, the, the main chord, the tonic chord. So... And 
again, that's that thing that makes it sound truly kind of traditional minor. That sound, going back to D. So I like that as the verse, let's just have that happen twice. Okay, now, two th one side thing. I'm strumming in this way where I play the bottom strings and then sometimes the top strings to kind of orchestrate and have more of a variety of sound. I have videos about that kind of thing um, and I'll put a link to one of them at least um, in the description for you to check out some strumming technique stuff. Um, one or two videos on that. Let's think about what we're going to next. Now we need to write the pre-chorus. Let's go to a chord that we haven't used yet. A lot of times I, if a new section is coming up, I'm like, what's a, what's a, if I want a fresh sound, what's a fresh area that we haven't gone to yet? So, well, we haven't used the sixth chord yet. Let's do it as a dominant, uh, as a major seven chord. So this is the flat six major seven chord of G minor. We mapped this out. That's how we know it's there. Okay, and then let's go to C minor. Ah, two fresh chords, two chords that we haven't used yet. And then let's do D7 again. And then back to G minor. That's nice. So, okay, if we're if we're starting on E set, E flat major chord, then this chord, the five of E flat, five, six, seven, one, five of E flat, let's do a dominant seventh chord of E flat major to lead to that going into the bridge. And then we can loop around back to it also. So we're using a lot of this kind of traditional functional harmony. I have a video on functional harmony. Check that out. There's a link in the description if you need to really understand what that uh, term means. So here's the verse. Leading back to G minor. Okay, here and now. because we're leaving that E flat. So very cool, because we ended on this chord, but then we made it dominant seven. That is not in the key. That turning it into dominant seven is not in the key of G minor. So we're doing what's called a secondary dominant right there. A chromatic chord. Um, I have a video called Chromatic Chords, and it talks about secondary dominance. That's creating a dominant chord leading to something that's not the main chord of the key. And then that's exactly what we've done here. So all this comes together to Again, we want to have this down as a language so we can use it super quickly and speak it, right? And not have to think too much. So now I'm here, and I like this progression a lot. E flat major seven, C minor, D seven, G minor, but let's repeat it so we can play this again and repeat it so it can happen twice. I'll just loop it for a second. So that, that's our pre-chorus um, that we're doing. Now I wanna do something even more um, interesting here since we just talked about secondary dominance. C minor is the four chord of the key. We just mapped all that out in the earlier step. Well, let's do a five of C minor. This is the secondary dominant thing. What is five of C minor? One, if you call C, one, seven, six, five, that's the five. Turn that into dominant seven and then go to... Okay, well, what if we proceed the C minor chord with that? So we go... Oh. Now we just added more push and pull, right? More tension and resolution um, to all of it. So here's our pre-chorus. And then looping back to it. Very lovely kind of minor sound. Um, let's do one other thing just to spice it up even more. C minor is here. This is in the chord, this flat three of C minor. Flat three, two, one. That's the flat three of C minor. Well, that note can be an extension of the five chord that's leading into it. So this is called the flat 13 of G7. So this is G7 flat 13. I have a video called 9, 11, 13 chords. <laughs> Something else about the title, but anyway, 9, 11, 13 chords, extensions, and explains all of that really, really, 
really super clearly. And also a video on how to add extensions to shell voicings. This is a shell voicing of G7, and we're adding a flat 13 to it. And that is specifically something that exists when you're about to go to a minor chord. So let's add that to it. Okay, the way you can think of this note is it's a half step above the, the five of the chord. Okay, so. That's what our pre-chorus is doing now. So you don't have to catch every single, all of this stuff, but I hope it's helping you see how basic it can be to just say, what's all our chords in the key? How can we think of adding maybe a secondary dominant type chord here and there? How can we think of adding maybe extensions here and there? And it starts to seem very kind of advanced, like, whoa, how does someone know all that stuff? But for me, I just know it from taking it one step at a time and enjoying however many hours and hours it takes to map the stuff out. That's why I enjoy doing that, because I know once it's mapped out, I can use it endlessly and creatively. So let's use it one more time, the flat 13, just to drive it home. This is D7. The top note here is the five of D7. If that's five, there's that flat six, flat 13. Flat six and flat 13 are the same thing. Oh, that's a very common sound to hear something melodic go. That's <laughs> high for me. Because it's really part of the minor key, the overall minor scale of G minor. Which is why that extension would be over D7 and not this extension. Because that extension of D7 is the 13, happens to be the major third of G. You don't have to remember any of that, but extensions of chords all around the key still are relating back to the tonal center and the original scale. Just straight up, what's the original scale that we're in? One, two, flat three, four, five, flat six, flat seven, major seven, one. G minor. Here is our pre-chorus. Cool. Back to do it again. Okay, so that was E flat major 7, G7 flat 13, C minor, D7 with this little embellishment, and then back to G minor flat dominant seven to lead back to all of that. Okay, so that's uh, our pre-chorus. Let's do a chorus. Um, since we've honed in so much on G minor, let's do a chorus that's just totally something, maybe a two chord back and forth away from the key. E flat major seven, B flat major seven. Just keeping it simple now with these two and avoiding avoiding the minorness of the whole key for that, which for a chorus, this is just how it's starting to shape up, but for a chorus, that's kind of cool. It can be kind of a more upbeat sounding um, chorus because it kind of, you could think of it as switching to more of a major key there. I still think of it as overall in G minor, but let's just have that be it. And what this does nicely, is that when we want to, right here, a half step below E flat, is D7 to go back to whatever we need to go back to. So in our song form, we have the chorus going back to the verse. Well, that's actually perfect. So when we're ready to go back to the verse, which starts on G minor, we're gonna hit a D7 chord. So here would be the chorus progression. However long we want to, and then, ah, it really sounds like an arrival point back to the song that we were writing. So we went somewhere. The last section we need to fill in is the bridge, and then we'll decide what the intro is going to be. So um, for this bridge, um, let's just do this. Um, G 
just kind of a little energy thing, nice and simple. So notice I'm not trying to innovate every time, overly innovating, because we did a lot of that on that on that pre-chorus, right? So if we're like, okay, what chord haven't we gone to yet? Ooh, we haven't used half diminished yet. Ooh, let's throw that in. Now, if you love that and you want the sound, do, you know, go where your heart takes you. But I've done this many times to learn the lesson that intellectualizing it as I go in the sense of, ooh, what chord option should I do for this and that reason versus just, hey, let's just play something that works. And only the feelings can tell you if it needs, if it's the right thing or if it needs to change. Um, so I try not to overly explore, especially if I've done some dense stuff somewhere. We did some dense stuff. Let's have the bridge just be this. This is one chord of the key and then flat six major triad, flat seven major triad, G minor, E flat, F. And then that can lead back into whatever section the we decided already, of course, that the bridge is just going to go back into the chorus. Last thing is just to decide on the intro. And I'm just going to do this quickly and say that the intro should be the um, just a little riffage from the chorus. So usually I'll think of the intro and I'll think, what can I use that sounds um, that's kind of taken from the song to sound like a little song moment that if you hear the beginning of the song, I call it the song signature. If you hear the very beginning, is it going to be recognizable? Like, um, you know how at some concerts or live videos or whatever, people playing live music, they'll start the song and right away everyone cheers because they're like, oh yeah, I recognize that. I mean, think about the songs that when you hear the very beginning of it, you know what it is. I do try to keep that in mind when writing something. I don't just want something at the very beginning that sounds like it could be anything and only it's only recognizable when like the voice or melody or verse comes in or whatever. Now we're going to fill out more of this in other videos. Let's just say that the intro is going to use a little piece of the chorus, just this vibe. And we'll try to song, song signature it by adding something melodic over it. That feels like, really feels like the song. Um, so we filled in all our chord progressions for all the sections, the verse, the pre-chorus, the chorus, the bridge, and then we decided on what the intro is going to be harmonically at least. And that's just the chord progression for all of that. So of course we want to piece it all together. And this is already a really long video. So I'll do another video where we add more to the song and finish the song with uh, how we write melodies over this. And this is not the only way to write songs and there's no right way and there's no wrong way, right? You can start with a melody. You can start with lyrics. You can start with a beat. You can do whatever you want. This is one way to do it. That's pretty cool. We're just, let's fill out this like I said, paint by numbers, right? Like we decided on the key and the chord options, then the song form. So you just know, well, now I just need to write a progression for each of the sections in that form. And now we did that. So what's it gonna sound like when we piece it all together? So what I'll do next is I will just play exactly what we just came up with, all pieced together, and I'll fill it out with, uh, with a beat and, and a bass line. So you hear it, maybe how it would sound together if it starts to get filled out with a production. And yeah, and then we'll check in after that and talk about what the next video will be when we'll fill in writing melody. Okay, here's what we wrote all put together.
you want to study your chord options through various keys like we did in this video, grab my chord chart called Chords with Color. It's totally free. There's a link to it in the top of the description, or you can go to soundguitarlessons.com slash chords with color. It shows five different keys and also how to treat them as minor keys. So really it's 10 different keys of chords through keys, as well as many, many options for those chords to make them more colorful and interesting. Probably some voicings you've never played in that chord chart before, but that are very physically approachable, not difficult to play, sticks mostly with open string chords, even though in this lesson we're using these movable chords, but all the theory is the same. We wanna know that stuff so well, so when, we, when it comes time to express and create and have fun, like we're doing in this video, making stuff up, we just have it ready to go, we can see those options. And if we don't, we take that enjoyable practice time to sit and review those options and have fun hearing how they sound and then coming back to the creative endeavor after that. So I really enjoyed doing that. It was cool to see how the chord progression came together in the end and through some, you know, a little bit of uh, padding, uh, backing track uh, production to it with the drums and bass. Next video, we're going to add lead guitar and vocal melodies to it. So I will talk through the same progressions and how I write melodic material, either for the guitar or for singing over the chord progressions once they're all filled out. So we're getting close to having a finished song and that's what we're gonna to work towards in the next video. I post a new lesson every Tuesday. Hope to see you in that next one. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and happy practicing.